Vidmori POV. Zasatir seemed to be relieved by my intentions after I explained the circumstances of the letter. In fact, he seemed to take the task even more seriously than before. I dictated the letter to him, sounding firm but apologetic, as I explained the fake circumstances I thought up for the knights and acolytes, mixing in truth with fantasy, as I told a story of being ambushed by bandits, with half of our forces being injured. How we're currently holed up in a cave with the product, as well as several bandits that were taken alive. Hopefully, the slavers will be impatient and come and meet us on my turf, between the chance to get even more merchandise than initially planned, and attempt to extort their prospective business partners, considering the piss poor situation they expect to come in on. After I said all I needed to say, Zasatir couldn't help but flash a vindictive smile as he looked over his handiwork. Gingerly, he rolled up the scroll and looked to my core before lowering his head. Vedmori, your wisdom and intelligence know no bounds. I dare say I have never participated in an act of roguery and deception quite like this. I await to see the fruits of our labours, he enthused, soon chuckling heartily and mischievously, before laying the scroll before my pedestal. If you'll excuse me, I must at least inform the others of what shall transpire soon, he said, still rather cheerful, before bowing again and heading out of the cavern. Alright, now then, let's get this message out and the ball rolling. I look around for a moment and soon track down where Jack had gone off to, and from what I can tell, he's managed to make fast friends with the hawk, the messenger bird chowing down on some squirrel meat as it scores happily in delight. It appears Jack has an excellent handle on the stick and carrot method, managing to make friends out of enemies. Jack, bring our guest back over here. It's time to get going. Jack perks up at my call, and tweets out eagerly before looking at the hawk. Come along, you. Mill time is over, he mused, as he began making his way toward my chamber. The messenger scores with dismay, taking a few more scoops of squirrel meat in its beak before hurrying after Jack. Before long, they're in my chamber once more, the hawk looking in better shape than before, and decidedly drier than the last time I saw it. All right, Jack. I want you to follow after this messenger with a squadron of birds. Your task is to personally get eyes on his handlers before returning to me. You must also leave a daisy chain of birds between here and there to monitor the road so we can plan for their arrival, I explain, before looking over to the messenger. You will be returning soon enough, so don't do anything stupid, and I think we'll get along just fine. Got it? The messenger hawk appeared to flutter his wings almost anxiously, before splaying his wings out and bowing lowly, before sitting upright again. Jack nodded intently as well, and I could feel the thoughts in his mind start going through which of his birds to call on for this expedition. Aye, Vidmori, will do, he stated, in a surprisingly dutiful tone, before collecting the scroll Zasatir left behind and tucking it away in the messenger's harness. The hawk stood stiffly, almost on instinct as it took on its new package, and relaxed once Jack had finished stowing the scroll. I look forward to hearing your report. Stay safe out there. For some reason, I felt the tingling of memories of my past, watching the youths and young adults, who knew nothing of life before the fall of society, watching them getting geared up for the first time. The twisting gut feeling of watching them go off, and leave the safety of the havens to face the unflinching cruelty of the undead, just knowing that I probably wouldn't see most of them again. I have sent Jack out far from my territory before, but it feels different this time. He's more of a person to me now rather than an animal I just brought back. For some reason, Jack seems to tilt his head thoughtfully before offering a small beaky smile. Will do, Vedmori. I'll be careful. With that, he nudges the messenger hawk and turns towards the entrance of my chamber, as they both take to the wing, and head out to do as I instructed. I couldn't help but stare after them for a moment, before I noticed Basti staring up at me, her ears flicking a little. Oh, don't give me that. I'm not sad, maybe anxious, though it's only old memories for me now. 
Anyways, there is much work to be done, and my focus will be elsewhere, so feel free to roam as you like for now. Basti rumbled a low murr in response, slowly getting to her paws before slinking out from my chamber and making her way down the mountain to find something to do to pass the time. Now, I have yet another checklist to tend to before our new friends arrive. I decide to go ahead and dip into my iron reserves, forming and shaping simple yet thick iron bars for my future jail cells. I don't bother with trying to make any sort of gate for the doorway, since I figured I could just pull the bars into my storage if I needed to move them for any sort of reason. I don't think I'll need to go out of my way to separate or isolate my future guests, at least not right away, so maybe one or two big cells should suffice for now. It doesn't take much to install the bars, opting to take one of my pre-carved rooms and block the narrow entryway with the iron bars. This would mean that they would have plenty of room to move around and stretch their legs, but if I were to fill the room with all six of them, it would no doubt help with making the room at least feel cramped and get tensions to rise all on their own. Ultimately, it didn't take too long to set up that prison cell. I'll probably have to have the walls or someone hunt some game for me, maybe even have that rat cook to prepare some food for me, so I at least have something to feed my future guests, since it wouldn't be right to let them starve, even if they are slavers. Next, I ought to give a heads up to the sinners, maybe even dole out the armour their bodies came with in order to complete the act I intend to have them perform. I first look for them in their training room, the sinners having isolated themselves there for some rather intense training for the last several days. From what I could tell, their expectations about their own strength had been shattered after their encounter with the ewes. They took the loss hard and appeared appropriately humbled after charging in the way they did. It wasn't really their fault. It was a lousy matchup outright, and from what I could tell, only Envy and Sloth even had a chance to do anything against that ooze. Regardless, they weren't in their training room, surprisingly enough. Instead, I ended up finding them in the med bay, sitting around the still wounded gluttony. From what I could tell, all six of the sins, including the recently awoken Dread, were meditating around gluttony. Taking a closer look, I realised all of them were mimicking the technique I had learned from that lizard healer, slowly reaching out with their mana, and swelling it around within gluttony. It was a truly impressive display of synchronicity, as they did their level best to stabilise her. From what I could tell, it was working. In fact, I decided to hijack this meditation session, and brought out the bear corpse, laying it beside gluttony, as I threw in my mana in the mix and began to fuse the two bodies together. The bear shrinks and disintegrates as gluttony begins to be fused with the parts and materials coming from the bear. Once more, the process took quite some time, but not nearly as long as it had with dread, despite gluttony needing much more extensive repairs. Before long, the bear is nothing but a pile of fur and bone scraps, and in its place is a petite yet beefy looking bearkin woman. She looked more like a bear than a human, or rather a dwarf. They were looking more along the lines of a beastkin like the majority of the other beastkin in the haven. She admittedly looked rather cute at a glance, looking like some sort of oversized bear cub, but I have no doubt that image will change once she wakes up. The sinners and dread finally stirred out of their deep meditative states, and collectively looked surprised by the new state gluttony was in, though I could feel their minds collectively realise what happened as they stood. Creator of Mori, thank you for your aid in repairing gluttony. We truly appreciate your generosity and care, Dredd stated for the group, lowering his head as he bowed in the direction of my core. No need to thank me, guys. You're my people. Of course I'm going to help. But in any case, I have a task for all of you. Specifically, I'm calling upon Envy, Wrath, and Greed. I've got a job for you three in particular. I explained gently, before calling on those three, the sinners and dread exchanging glances before the trio steps forward. Come to my chamber, and I'll explain there. With that, the trio saluted before making their way out and up the mountain, the rest sitting back around gluttony to meditate some more and gather manner from the air.